Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, April 4th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a new report shows that the NSA is changing people's search habits. Then, reports of a Georgia officer pulling a gun on fifth graders. And Michigan police use military hardware to track phone calls. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. The new service will be sucking black boots as they kick you in the face and then taking your shirt off when they shoot you in the chest. That'll be the patriotic duty. Well, thought crime is here. One week they're banning the word bossy and another week they're banning questions altogether. At least that's when you're asking tough questions of authoritarians. This time, it's a Connecticut student. He was suspended for asking a governor questions about gun control during an appearance at a public forum. The student, Nicholas Saucier, approached Democratic Governor Daniel Malloy after a campus event at his community college. He asked him to address his support for gun control legislation, which Saucier claims has negatively impacted his ammunition manufacturing business. Now, as this video shows, Saucier was polite and courteous and was simply asking legitimate questions of his elected representative. The governor, of course, declined to comment, got in a car, and drove off. But the principal of the community college is seen trying to push Saucier away from the governor before calling campus police, claiming that he verbally attacked the governor. That's right. When you ask tough questions now, you are verbally attacking people. Now, Saucier was then charged with harassment and making threats among other violations of the college's conduct policy. The college refused to review the video evidence of the incident, and he was suspended on the grounds that his continued presence at the school would present a danger to the person's property and or academic process of the college. Meanwhile, this is the academic process that violated his rights to due process by failing to allow him to show the video in his, in his trial there at the college that proved that he was just exercising his First Amendment right. He wasn't harassing the governor. He was being polite and respectful, and they would not allow that to be shown. So, so much for academic process there. So not only did this college violate his First Amendment rights, but they violated his rights to due process all because he was asking tough questions of his elected representative. So isn't this what colleges are supposed to be teaching students, educating them on how public policy works and how to engage in democracy? But no, not anymore. Not when your questions are the tough, real questions for authoritarians, when they counter the agenda of the establishment then you are being verbally abusive. But it's not just questions about the Second Amendment that are in danger, it's the entire Second Amendment itself that could be in jeopardy. In fact, the entire U.S. Constitution could be up for review after Michigan became the 34th state to vote in favor of a constitutional convention. It satisfies a rule that states America's founding document can be amended if two-thirds of state legislatures approve the measure. Now, while some would welcome the opportunity to amend the Constitution to institute fiscal conservatism, others fear the move could easily be hijacked to negate parts of the document that protect fundamental liberties, such as the right to bear arms and freedom of speech. Now, of course, this would be an unprecedented move to amend the Constitution, and we already can see the writing on the wall. We already see that they are really doubling down on doing away with the Second Amendment, or at least amending it to say that only the militia can have guns and that you and I do not have the right, even though it's currently our Second Amendment right, it shall not be infringed, but they're going to do away with that. They want to amend the First Amendment and say who's a journalist, who isn't a journalist, we can see the writing on the wall, so of course this would be an unprecedented move. We'll have to stay tuned to see what happens with this constitutional convention. But while our right to bear arms is being infringed upon, police are getting away with doing whatever they want with their guns. They can point it and shoot it whoever they want, homeless men who aren't posing any threat, and children. This time, police in Georgia forced a group of fifth graders to the ground at gunpoint this week as the kids were attempting to build a tree fort in their own neighborhood. Now, according to 911 calls, a neighbor noticed the children chopping off tree limbs and said the activity was hurting the environment and creating tripping hazards. 
So this, of course, had the police who arrived at the scene to find 11-year-old Amari Grant and his friends playing in a small patch of trees. This prompted at least one officer to reportedly draw his firearm and force the boys to the ground as if they were robbing a bank or something. I was thinking that I don't want to be shot today, so I just listened to what they said immediately as they said it. So of course that's complete insanity when the police are pointing guns at our children. At least the little boy didn't get shot this time. But the nosy neighbor who called 911 and reported these environmental hazards, she was pretty surprised to find out that that little nanny state phone call resulted in a gun being pointed at these kids. I'm sure that wasn't the effect she was going for, but that's what's absolutely ridiculous about this is that they are building this prison up around us and we're just, you know, helping them, helping them lay the bricks. But we have even more video of out of control police officers and violation of people's rights. This one appears to be a police forcibly entering a man's home without a warrant. And then the cop tells 26 year old Donrell Bro that he is going to be arrested. Bro reacts by saying, you're scaring me. And he's asking the cop, why is he entering his home? Why is he being arrested? And Bro asks the officer his name. The cop responds, I'm not answering you, you answer to me, before tackling bro and attempting to handcuff him. And he says, you're under arrest for resisting an officer. Now the man goes on to beg the officer, please don't shoot me, please don't shoot me, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'll do whatever you say. And the cop then, he goes on to cuff the man, he's like, I'm sorry, you know, I'll do whatever you say. Clearly not resisting arrest, clearly not. He just, he's like, what are you doing in my home? What is happening? He went on to be charged with resisting arrest and assaulting an officer. The officer never did say why he was there or what happened, but keep the cameras rolling because hopefully whatever this video evidence can be presented to show that this man wasn't resisting arrest, he wasn't doing anything, but that's what happens is the cops just do whatever they want and it's their word against yours and they'll just throw all kinds of charges at you and hoping that you'll just take a plea or something. But this is where we're at, out of control police. And that's because the tyranny starts at the top. Why are they going to obey the law and uphold their oath if the people at the very top are not? And if we here on the local level are not taking our police to count, then why are they ever gonna stop? Why are they ever going to stop if we don't stand up to tyranny? And now, of course, we've got the prospect of a constitutional convention to try and infringe on our rights even more. But it's not like any of those who are in power are obeying the Constitution anyway. They're going to get away with as much as people will let them. Now, again, we have here in Michigan, the police there are gonna soon be using a hailstorm device to track people's cell phone calls. Now, this is similar to the Stingray cell phone tracking system we reported on earlier this year that's secretly being used by police in Florida and California. The Department of Justice issued a memorandum in 2011 admitting that the use of the device constituted a Fourth Amendment search and seizure. Now, the FBI characterized the tracking device as a vital component used as the agency strives to protect our country and its people. Now, the undersheriff Michael McCabe of the Oakland County Police argued the hailstorm device will be used to help us capture fugitives from the law, people wanted for murder and rape, adding the device purchased with a Homeland Security grant is not a tool to spy on people. <laughs> right, because we can always count on them to do what they are authorized to do. Now, a FOIA request that was uh, sent over by a local newspaper was turned back, saying that information about the device is protected under anti-terror laws and includes investigating records compiled for law enforcement purposes, that would disclose law enforcement investigative techniques or procedures. So there you go, once again, not allowed to ask questions, and then they can just put this umbrella of anti-terror protection so they don't have to answer to you, they don't have to let you know what they are up to, and they can basically just get away with anything. And you, slaves, are not allowed to ask questions about anything. Do not commit thought crime. Now, that is the effect that this mass surveillance society is going to have. People are gonna start changing their habits, doing what they need to do to not be surveilled or not do anything that's going to put them on the no-fly list or 
And I was actually speaking with John Rappaport about this last week, about the NSA revelations and how the slow drip every few months of the NSA revelations is just kind of putting it in people's minds that this surveillance society exists and is almost a form of social conditioning. Well, now a new poll shows that this is actually true. People are acclimating to the society and uh, it's nearly half of all Americans have changed their internet habits over NSA spying. Now the poll was conducted by ESET by for ESET by Harris Interactive Inc. and it found that 47% of Americans have changed their behavior and think more carefully about where they go, what they say, and what they do online. More than half of those, 26%, said they are conducting fewer financial transactions online, including reducing their online shopping habits and online banking. It found that Americans were even less comfortable using email, with 24% of respondents saying that they were less inclined to communicate via email. But surprisingly, people were more likely to trust the NSA to protect their private information than they were to trust Facebook or Google to keep their information safe. Well, at least people are recognizing the fact that these corporations are not out for their best interests or to make their experience online better. They are trying to categorize all of us and achieve total information awareness. Now, coming up, I have a special report about some victories for the First and Fourth Amendment where people have actually stood up to tyranny and been successful. And that was a huge theme in the new Captain America movie. A lot of the InfoWars crew went and watched it last night. Standing up to tyranny, not just buying into this idea that the police state and total surveillance and total information awareness is in the hands of the globalists is, is inevitable. And that's what we're hearing a lot is that it's gonna happen, it's inevitable, just assimilate and get with it and don't try to fight it, don't try to stand up to it. This new world order, they will build it. But that is false. All it takes is for one person to stand up to tyranny and say, I'm not buying into this new world order that you're trying to build up around us. That will create the ripple effect. People seeing you stand up and succeed when you stand up against tyranny. That is all it takes to make some real change. And that's where we're at because we have been co-opted, America, in the world. So it is definitely time to stand up. So stick around and you're definitely going to want to check out the InfoWars crew review of Captain America. But heads up, there are a ton of spoilers. So check it out. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated